Hey folks, this is Iowa Thor and we're back with some more World Tanks. So as you can see, this is the ELC. It is of course driven by Action Trigger, who I will refer to as Ash for the rest of this game. This is a tier 9 game on Live Oaks and what do we got? We got a 48 percenter, so it, it's a fairly evenly matched team. Okay, so unfortunately my Axe game is not working for this game because it is an 8.11 game. So some things may not be what yours is saying, but that's okay because uh, for anyone who is wondering, I have, I think I have uh, patches all the way back to 8.8. .8. So if you have an on older game, go ahead and send it in. I'm, as long as it's uh, after 8.8, .8, I'm sure I have the, uh, the patch for it. So. Classic ELC move, tracking yourself within the first 30 seconds of the game. Uh, Ash, of course, waited a little bit and almost went a full minute before he had to track himself. Now we can truly start the game. Okay, so driving the ELC is a lot like driving a rocket ship. At, you know, uh, well, I describe it a lot like um, a rocket that has that's been welded to a cannon. This thing has a giant cannon for its tier, but of course in tier 9, that's not really very. That's not really very helpful or effective. Until it's not no longer a massive cannon. It's about the same as that uh, yeah, carry point eight back there. So if he just goes in really hard, he's just going to get himself killed. Rather though, he uses the rocket portion of his. If you track yourself again, I'll just going to yell at you. Anyways, yes, kill the scarecrow. If he uses the rocket portion of his abilities, he can get in there and get some really great spots off. Do a little bit of damage, and then come back out again unscathed. Now, what he does have to remember is, of course, this is a tier 9 game. So, things like the T9-5... Um, even the E-50 may be able to one-shot him. So... <laughs> And the IS line, right? I mean, these, these are tanks that regularly do about 400 damage. <laughs> so unless he's very careful, he's gonna get himself killed. Now, good job firing at the T29. Sadly, I think it went into his tracks and not actually into him. But that's okay. So he's just gonna stay there and try and spend this corner. Popping up to fire when he can and then pulling back. There's no point in him going any further uh, with it being on the other side of the ridge because, of course, he's just going to get himself killed. Even being on the other side of the ridge, unless he's got some actual cover, going much further is just silly. Okay. Uh, so now, one of the ELC's trademarks is, of course, its speed. If he doesn't have that speed, going into combat is dumb. Incredibly, incredibly dumb. So Ash is doing his best to stay out of combat, but make his presence known. He's doing his best to get spots off, and when he can, he's firing that cannon and trying to do some damage. He hasn't done anything yet, but that's not for lack of trying. Oop. Well, that was a bit bad driving, and he just didn't see that spot of wreckage. And there we go. Now we're using the ELC speed. Good effect. We, of course, have tracked ourselves in front of the enemy. Which has baited the Egg Tiger out into the open so our friendlies can put some fire down on him. Now is where the ELC gets really, really irritating. The Egg Tiger knows he's around here somewhere. And if Ash pushes up, he'll actually be in proxy spotting range of the Egg Tiger. But what's the Egg Tiger going to do? Come over the hill after him? If he does that, he's just going to get obliterated by Ash's friendlies behind him. So instead he's going to round this corner this way and put pressure on this IS who is currently running away from damage. Of course, running away from the ELC is just silly. And uh, And then it's just going to pull back and the IS has a lot less health and wisely chooses not to try and fight. That's an Artie show. Silly Artie trying to hit the ELC. That was kind of a lucky shot, but still completely worth it. Um, firing right there. 
as it did manage to take out the IS, and even if it had missed, the IS probably would not have been able to get its gun on target and aimed in before we were away. Now, what I would have liked to have seen is Ash actually go in closer to the target instead of running away from the target after he fired. Uh, if he had missed, then he would have had a lot more momentum going forward and been able to get around the other side of the IS without being able to do anything to him. However, excuse me, however, uh, he did kill it, so it doesn't really matter so much, but just, it's good he also played it. So, yeah, when in doubt, go forward, don't go back. The, the problem with the ELC is, of course, it's a rocket when going forward. But you back up, you, you slow yourself down immensely, and you tend not to be as, um, as effective. Obviously, you're definitely not as aggressive, but you, you tend also to be not nearly as effective when uh, just many times backing up and like going forward. Now, if you want to get spots over a ridge, what you should be doing is running up and then running across the ridge horizontally, but you, you can use the four momentum to come back down again. That's also a good idea when trying to fire, is to put yourself in such a position where you pivot to right or left and then plow straight or forward, using your momentum to get yourself out of a situation. Now, Ash has decided that he's going to go straight for the artillery. I thought maybe he was going to stay in that bush and try and do some passive spotting, but nope. He's just going to jump in here and... Oh yeah, there goes the Egg Tiger 8 I thought he was completely safe until... Uh, until warning bells, EOC on the flanky. You know. It's like torpedo off the starboard bow. Not what you want to hear right now. Ooh, nice shot into the 212A. And now the Lorraine is scrambling to try and assist. There are three guys here who are all going to be aiming at Ash instead of doing actual damage in this battle. And there you go. So I'm just going to pause that right there. That is the 212A aiming down as far as it can get and is not going to be able to point blank hit Ash. So that means Ash has to be at least 10 to 20 feet away from this guy in order to get hit by him. Of course, he can't get rammed to death, but that's not really the issue. So he can do horrible things with this 212 without it being able to do anything in return. He's actually using the 212 as cover against the Marine. He saves his shell, takes out the artillery. Now it's only it's a one on one, and he knows he can reap a little faster than the Lorraine. He just has to not get rammed by it. He spun around a little bit. And you're just going to get around the other side of this guy. And now he's got the worry. That was a bad shot to take. And I'm not certain I would have done that. That was incredibly risky. But it paid off because now we got the Lorraine spinning. And the Lorraine is never going to spin that spin fast enough to shoot out. And the Lorraine is actually a really good player because you can see him holding his shot as long as he can. He needs to be able to get this last shot into the LC. If he doesn't, he's dead. So he's going to hold it until he knows it'll go in. Unfortunately for him, Ash is a good player too. And, well, of the two of them, only one can win, right? So now there's only three members of the M3. And the M5355 is not here. And that was a great bit of telltale knowledge. If he'd been near us, we would have heard the boom. And probably seen the tracer. I'm going to guess he's actually over by like B1, C1 at, at this point in time. Uh, because of where that shell landed and because of the fact that we didn't see Tracer and, and a bunch of other things. Just from uh, years of scouting. So, we know our base is safe because we actually have our, our platoon mate, who I completely forgot to mention this entire game. Priority Aces is back there in his T-34 defending the base. So he's most likely firing HE shells into the T95 to just reset the cap and keep this guy pinned down while our T30 just does the damage. And there we go. It's dead. So now that we couldn't actually find the already over here where he was most likely. Okay, well the next most likely position is of course where the map is being hanged. And that is just a beautiful sight. ELC in full flight is just amazing to watch. Now, the next most likely position is of course down into the swamp area. How he got there, I don't know. I, 
You know what? Actually, no. Let's try the route Ash took. No, I don't think he can be down there. Now, he may have started out over here and run down into the swamp as we were killing his uh, friends. There we go. But he didn't. He was over here this entire time. And Ash gets a nice shot into him. Okay, we're going to pause this again. And you see that as long as Ash is close to this guy, this guy is never going to be able to get his gun on target. So all, all Ash has to do is hug this guy, and we'll be fine. Yep. Even at his very closest, the very best position, no way that shell was ever going to hit the LC. This poor guy. There's nothing he could do about this battle. It was just lost when he fired. Well, lost when the EOC found him, anyway. Not that he probably could have won before that, but you know what I mean. So, that is some of the awesomeness of an EOC, if you didn't know. 2200 experience with premium without a daily double. That was pretty awesome. This was a tier 9 game, and he came out with a Tomata medal. I can't pronounce y Yoshi Yoshio Mata Yoshio. I'm I'm hoping I didn't butcher that too badly. Anyways, so this of course is the medal for destroying at least three self-propelled guns while driving light tank and survives the battle, but they must be at least two tiers higher than you. So and of course the Pas Pascucci's medal, not really surprising. Like you know. That, that's a more standard medal. This one is a lot more rare. I haven't seen that one before. Uh, except maybe in one of my games. Yeah, right. <laughs> of course, Mastery Class, or Ace Tanker. Wow, my head is not here right now. And he just, he did a few shots, a few tanks that he couldn't kill. But the ones he really got damage on, he really started to influence the battle with. Um, the, the first time he was really involved in change the course of battle was of course this Jag 8.8 which he murdered and then just started distracting their artillery at a key position where our T30 and our T34 were pretty much in the same spot unable to move while they tried to take out the T95 if their artillery had still been in play during that we would have lost that game without a doubt but because our EOC took out the artillery and distracted them like crazy uh, we won, and Parody Aces deserves props for the most damage in the game with over 3,000, and 3,000 potential damage received. Uh, was that a Spartan? Yeah. I'm not surprised he didn't get a steel wall. We got a steel wall. Oh, you didn't take enough shots to get a steel wall. I see. My bad. Props, of course, also go to our T30 and the Bat Chat. And props go to the Lorraine driver, because he almost won a duel with an ELC, which is really difficult. If you've ever driven an ELC, you'll know. So the consumables he used, of course, because he almost, you know, killed himself <laughs> by tracking himself twice. 2,000 potential damage, or 2,000 damage dealt. And a little bit of spotting, but wait. He took potential damage but didn't die. That must have been splash damage eaten by his tracks. Anyways, that was a great game to watch. Thank you so much, Ash, for saying that in. I love watching me some ELC games. They are just... It feels so awesome as you, you know, watch a player get out of alert, humil hum humiliated by this little tiny tank just driving around in circles, murdering him, you know, slowly every 10 seconds or so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so thank you guys for watching and hitting the like or subscribe button if you do really do want to help me out. If you really did like this video, hit the like button. That's all I ask, okay? Thank you so much. Have a great night. This is IOE Throughout. And props go.